there was this great God-fearing, God-loving generation, but they die out. By the way, know this. Scientifically proven, every generation is going to die out. Like, you're going to eventually die. And Joshua and Caleb, they died out. Their generation died out. And the next generation grew up. And they didn't know God nor follow God. Now, some of you may not know Joshua's generation. They may go, well, I don't really know what's the big deal about them. Joshua and Caleb, like, they are the dynamic duo. Uh, they are unbelievable as two young men, the way they live their life of faith. They were great leaders, and they led God's people into the promised land that even Moses couldn't lead the people into. Joshua's generation saw miracle after miracle after miracle, and yet their kids, the very next generation, grew up not knowing or following God. There's a couple of things about Joshua and Joshua and Caleb that you need to know. First of all, they were focused. When, when God called Moses to deliver the children out of bondage, his chosen nation out of slavery, they send in the spies, 12 of them to be exact. And there was one from each tribe. And here's the only thing they were supposed to do. Just go into the land that God says, I'm promising to you. Like, I'm giving you this land. It's like this. Uh, many of you have watched some of the events of the Olympics already, but you knew what the result was going to be. Those are fun to watch, especially when we win. Like, when you know that we come in first, man, it's just fun. Fun to watch that. It's kind of what this was. God says, I want you guys to spy out the land. I'm going to give it to you, so don't worry about it. You're going to have victory in me, all right? But go spy out the land. Come back, tell everybody how great it is. So the 12 spies go in, and 10 of them come back and spread a bad report, a negative report in regard to the land. Only Joshua and Caleb said the land is flowing with milk and I mean, here are some of the produce from the land. It is unbelievable. So they were focused. Matter of fact, I would tell you they were faithful. So faithful were they that here's what God said. Every person 20 and older is going to pass away before I allow you to dwell in the land I've promised. Except for two people, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb were able to live long enough to actually inhabit, to dwell, to, to go back to the land that they had visited as spies. Now, you have to think that when it got down to like the last three guys, man, Joshua and Caleb, you don't look good. Uh, I could take you out of your misery because once everyone died off, they got to go in. So they were faithful, and it seems like they finished. You know, it's one thing to start, something else to finish. You know, that's one thing in America, like if, if there was a gold medal for, fit, for starting, man, we're getting it. Uh, like we're great at starting. But the problem is you can't just start the race. You have to finish the race. You, you, you finish the race to win the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. And so it, it looks like they're going to finish well. But then again, we had that very sad verse that we had to read that there was a generation right after them that did not know the Lord. Uh, there is this verse. Many of you have read it a lot. Uh, some of you have read it, even prayed it over your own families. Some of you may have had someone read this, pray this over you. Um, it, it's read a lot at weddings. It, it's found in Joshua 24 verse 14 and 15. I, I want you to see the words of Joshua himself, right? Now, you know the backstory. You know that right after he dies, that there's a generation that doesn't know God nor follow God. But I just told you a little bit about who they were, Joshua's generation. But I want you to hear from Joshua. Look what he says starting in verse 14. Now fear the Lord... Serve him with all faithfulness. 
throw away the gods of your ancestors who they worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, this is the one that a lot of you have on a, on a mug or a bumper sticker. Or somebody gave you a picture when you got married, your aunt did, and, uh, and, and you put it in your closet somewhere. But look at verse 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served, so he's saying the gods that your uh, uh, that the, the generation before us served beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites, but knows in whose lands we're living. Uh, but look at this last sentence. But as for me, that's Joshua. As for me and my household, I love how he doesn't give them a vote, right? He doesn't like pulls his kids over, his family over, says, listen, for me, and oh, wait, by my family, and you got to think, like, every family has that one, you know, child who's like, ah, I don't really know if I want to be counted in that vote. And then Joshua, no, no, get over it. As for me and my household, here's what we're going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. Yet somehow, Joshua's generation, for all the good and all the godly things they did, I'm convinced they didn't do the most important thing. They didn't pass their faith on. They somehow, somewhere, dropped the baton. Now, they said it, right? Joshua even calls everyone together, makes this amazing declaration. But I, I'm convinced they spoke it, but they didn't share it. So it's one thing to say what you're going to do. It's one thing to have the family meeting. It's one thing to have the family prayer. It's the one thing to bring the family to church. But you're actually going to live it. And in living it, are you going to share it? Because you can say it, but everybody else is watching. So you can say it, but do they see it? And something happened with Joshua and Caleb, two of my favorite people in all the Old Testament. They said it, but for some reason, their kids didn't see 